everyone welcome back to my channel welcome back to another product review video if you don't know i'm austin and on this channel i do beauty product reviews as well as tips for beauty content creators so be sure to subscribe and stick around if that sounds like content that you would enjoy in my three years on YouTube video, I asked you guys what video reviews you might most like to see, and the overwhelming response was to do product reviews from Black-owned businesses, which I am so glad you guys said that because it just so happens that I placed an order for the Juvia's Place Foundation, and I'm going to be reviewing it on my channel today. This is my first purchase from them, and I have so many thoughts about it, so I'm going to talk you guys through the product claims, the price point, the shade range, and all of those things like I normally do. And and then I'll also show you how I apply this foundation to my face and what it looks like. I really want to make it a mission on this channel to incorporate more products from black owned businesses. So if you have any other recommendations for product reviews that you want me to do, leave them in the comments down below. So when I was on the website and trying to decide which product I wanted to test out, I wanted to go for something a little bit out of my comfort zone. And I also wanted to go for something that showed off the range of different products that you can get from this brand. So I am normally a very dewy foundation girl, as you may know if you've been here before but I decided to go for the I Am Magic Velvety Matte Foundation. So this product actually comes in 42 shades, which is amazing. All brands should be working to extend their shade ranges just like this, and all of the shade names are actually named after different cities. So there are lots of different cities in Africa, there are lots of different cities in the Caribbean, and my shade in particular that I got was Alexandria. They even have this helpful shade finder on their website, so you can choose which kingdom you belong to. So I am in the light kingdom. How would you describe your skin tone? Light, fair. I would describe it as light. And then you figure out your undertone, warm, neutral, or cool. I'm usually more in the neutral range, so it actually gives me a couple of different shade options for what might be best for me based on that. So I love that the shade finder is there to help me figure out which of these 42 shades works best for me. And I spoke about this a little bit actually when I reviewed the Fenty foundation too. I'll put a link if you haven't seen that video from me yet. But even, you know, as a light-skinned woman who has pretty much no issue ever finding a shade that works for me compared to what women of color have to go through. It's still even interesting for me to suddenly have so many different options and go really deep into it and try to figure out which one of these shades really suits me the best. So I did go one shade a little bit up from what the recommended one for me was because it is summer and I do have a tiny bit of a tan going on, so I figured I would get something that would work well for me right now. So this foundation is $20 and you get one fluid ounce of product, which I don't think is too far off from what many standard foundations are. The one thing that immediately threw me off about this was the packaging because to me this just looks like a lotion and I much prefer when foundations have a pump to them. So that would be my one thing about the packaging that I'm not in love with. But obviously the packaging is never as important as how the product actually performs. This brand is also against animal testing. It says on the back that they are, and this is a recyclable package. I will link the first recycling guide down below for how to recycle like every kind of beauty product because some things you just throw out. Some things you can actually recycle. This kind of tube is one of them, but there are specific instructions for how you have to do it. So be sure to check that out. I know we can all be a little bit better about how we go about throwing away beauty products. Before I apply the foundation, I just wanna show you what I used for skin prep today. So I always use my Versed SPF sunscreen underneath makeup, then the Glossier Priming Moisturizer Balance for mattifying, and a tiny bit of the Wellita Skin Food just to moisturize. I do have dry skin just to give myself a little bit of extra help in the areas where I may need it. And then also the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. This one is in Sweet Candy. And I have product reviews of these two products as well, so I will link those down below in case you want to watch either of them. But I'm gonna go ahead and zoom you guys in so we can see this product in action. Okay, so now that we have zoomed in a little bit, I'm going to apply this foundation. And the way that I've kind of been doing it is just putting a little bit on my finger like this, and then kind of just dabbing it onto my skin. It's not the most efficient way to apply foundation, and this is kind of why I prefer when it has a pump. I have my dampened beauty sponge here, and so I'm going to start dabbing it into my skin. 
With the Beauty Blender, you always want to do repeated tapping motions. You don't want to be dragging it across your skin. This gives the best finish when you use a beauty sponge or beauty blender. And I do love how velvety and like it is what it says it is, you know? It's a velvety matte finish, but for me, I never really go for the full on matte. So having the velvety matte finish is actually perfect as far as a matte foundation that I would choose for myself. So here's a quick kind of comparison. You can see a little bit of redness under my skin right now and how this just completely makes it go away. Okay, now take a look at the coverage. Pretty good. And as you can see, I still have a little bit of glowiness to my skin, but it's definitely not my normal full on dewy situation. I would definitely say this is like a medium to full coverage product, depending on how much of it you use. I do have a breakout down here that is pretty much covered up. I don't actually feel the need to go over that with concealer at all. I think we're looking pretty good. I do always with matte foundations get this tiny bit of line situation happening on my forehead, but that is something that I can fix with powder after, and that's kind of standard for me across lots of foundations, not just this one specifically. Okay, I'm gonna go finish the rest of my makeup and come back and share some final thoughts with you. All right, and here we are with my completed makeup on. So as you can see, the other products are layering nicely over it. My little bit of highlight here, my cream highlighter from Milk Makeup is looking good. The bronzer, the Fenty Cream bronzer is looking good. I did put a little bit of powder on top of here and just over my chin. So that line has been reduced a little bit, but like I said, I kind of get that all the time, no matter what, even though I typically apply a very light layer of foundations and and as you saw, I didn't even really use that much of this one. So to kind of summarize and give some overall thoughts, I really do like this foundation. I think that for a velvety matte foundation, which I really don't have one in my collection right now because I never replaced the Fenty one after I got it, I think this is a great option. It's $20. I think it's very worth the price, especially if you're someone who uses it in kind of a lighter capacity the way I do. Both of the Fenty foundations are actually $35. The one I'm talking about is the Pro Filter Velvet Matte Finish one. I think these are pretty comparable products. So this one is $20. I would definitely recommend trying this one first. I wanted to talk through the ingredients with you, but this is kind of my last comment on the brand as a whole. I went to their website to try to read more about the ingredients just because they're really tiny on here and I was looking for a little bit more information about all of them. And I went to the product page and couldn't find them, went to the FAQ page. It said that they were listed on the product page, went back to the product page, still couldn't find them. So I was just a little bit confused with my user experience on the website and I like it when brands go a little bit out of the way to educate more on the ingredients that they use and what the kind of standout ingredients are and what you know bad ingredients are if they don't include those so that information was kind of hard for me to find taking a quick glance at the back of the label there's nothing on here that jumps out as alarming to me but i do appreciate it when brands you know take that extra step to kind of educate their customers so i would say that and the package not being a pump were my kind of misses in terms of the brand and this actual product but in terms of how the product performs I love how it looks. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you found this review helpful. If you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up down below if I helped you figure out if you want to purchase this or not. And don't forget to subscribe. Like I said, new videos every Sunday and I do tons of beauty product reviews on this channel. I will leave my full playlist of beauty product reviews down below if you like my style of reviewing. Thanks again so much for watching and have an awesome rest of your day. Bye.